So we just have a series of numbers in this spreadsheet. We have a 12, 32, and 43. And the way to refer to the location of these numbers is by the column letter and the row number. So the 12 is located in A2. So what you can do with a cell reference is if I want to uh, use that number somewhere else, let's just say I want to show it in B2 for some reason. I'll hit an equal sign, which tells uh, Apple numbers that I'm getting ready to type uh, some sort of a formula. I will type A2. You can see it coming in at the bottom, and you can also see that cell uh, turning in a different color. I'll hit enter. Hit enter twice, and it just brings that value into the cell. And the interesting thing with this cell reference, though, is that if I copy it and I go into another cell, we'll, we'll put it two places. We'll put it in B3 and 4 and paste it. It's asking if I want to paste the formulas or the values. I'm going to paste the formulas, and it automatically adjusts. So when you look at the formula in B2, it's looking at A2. But if you go down to B3, the row number is changed. And that's a foundational concept with cell references is that they can change unless you tell them not to. And because they can change, these types of cell references are called relative cell references. And that's our first type of cell reference. All right, now we're going to use different types of cell references. And I've set up a spreadsheet here that just happens to need every type of cell reference. So we can talk about all of them. They're not that many, but each one of them is useful in different situations. So first we'll use what we had just talked about, simple relative cell reference. And we want to calculate the operating income. So that's going to be revenue minus expenses for all three of these lines. So let's hit our equal sign again, just to get the formula editor to come up. And this time, instead of typing it out, I'm going to just click on, let's say tap or click or whatever type of device you're using. No, I'm just gonna tap on it. I'm gonna tap on B2 instead of typing it out. And then I'm going to say minus, and then I'll tap on C2. Now, one thing to notice is that because I have headers in this table, so all I did was type this table out, but I gave each column a header. So the two headers, gross revenue and expenses before tax, replaced the column letters in the cell reference. Okay, and the same thing happened with the row headers. Now, that could be handy. You're usually just going to leave it like that, but you can still type B2 and C2, and it'll just change the cell references into these kind of more human readable types of cell references, but they're still relative cell references. Let's hit enter. And it did the math for us without us having to retype the numbers, right? So that's the magic of cell references. It brought those two values into the formula and did the equation for us. Select the two rows below it and paste. Now the tax calculations are completely wrong. We're going to talk about that type of cell reference next, but you'll notice these formulas updated for each subsequent row because they're relative cell references. All right, next we're going to do a fixed cell reference. So this is going to be a cell reference and we're going to tell part of it not to move when we copy and paste it in different places. So let's say, this is a tax rate. If the tax rate is in cell C6, and there's no tax rate in seven or eight, so you don't want this part of the formula to shift down. So we're going to take operating income, we'll tap on that, times the tax rate. You'll see that that just came up as C6 because there's no row header on six. We're also going to come down, we're going to click on that, and we're going to say, preserve the row. We'll click both the start and the end. We'll hit enter. And it behaved, we'll do command C, copy, command V to paste, is that you can see the first reference moved down to row three, but the reference to the tax rate stayed the same. So that's a fixed reference. In this case, it's a fixed row reference. You can also fix the columns if you need to. 
All right, so now our spreadsheet is starting to fill out and we have the right total corporate income. But now we need to pull in the spouse's income, but the spouse's income isn't in this table. It's actually below in table two. So this is a concept unique to Apple numbers where you can have multiple tables that are detached. They have their own rows and their own column references in the same sheet. So the easiest way to reference those is just to kind of cheat a little bit, hit the equal sign, and then just come down here and tap on what you need. But if you're using spreadsheets every day and you want to be faster, you want to type out this cell reference, how you do it is you start with the name of the table. So it says table two here, then two colons, and then just the regular cell reference. So that cell reference on the end, we're combining two concepts now. We have a reference to another table, but then you have a relative cell reference at the end. So if you needed to fix that, you could put the dollar signs in there if you needed to, or you could drop, use this drop down and turn it into a fixed cell reference that way. But it's relative cell reference is fine for what we're doing, so we'll hit equals. And that brings in the spouse's income from one table to another. Now, the other income is on a completely different sheet. So we go over to the sheet called other income. We want to grab this 29,000 number. So we'll do it the easy way. We'll talk about how it does it. So we'll hit equals and just come over while the cell is active and it's waiting for the formula, come over to the other income sheet and just click on the cell that you want. And when you look down at the bottom, the syntax that it used is the name of the sheet, two colons, the name of the table, two colons, and then the cell reference. In this case, we'll hit the green check mark to say that we're done. So now that you have the basics down of relative cell references, we'll take a look at a more advanced concept in Apple numbers, and that's building a pivot table. I'll see you in that next video. Thanks for watching.